The divine office is defined as the prayer of the mystical body of Jesus Christ offered to God in the name and on behalf of all Christians when recited by priests and other ministers of the church and by religious who are deputed by the church for this. Today in this brief talk on the divine office, I wish to explain this definition, provide a brief history of the office, then speak of its composition, and then give an exhortation to the faithful. So what we have to appreciate from this definition is that it is the prayer of the whole church, the bride of Christ. And consequently, the object of her prayer is much broader than the personal necessities of the one who is praying it. It consists rather of the needs of all of the mystical body of Christ, of the church. And so the priest, in his role as mediator between God and man, carries the prayers of the faithful to God, their, their prayers of, of praise, of petition, of adoration, and draws down upon man all the blessings from God. The priest is the deputed, the deputed minister of the church. He has the responsibility and it is in fact a responsibility that one assumes from the subdiaconate onwards. Now a little bit on the history of the divine office. The Jews would offer sacrifice in the temple, however, when taken away in the Babylonian captivity, they were no longer able to do this, and so they began the custom of offering prayers at certain hours. Following this captivity, they continued to be able to offer the sacrifice, and also continued the custom of offering prayers at certain hours. Now this reached its fulfillment in the New Testament with the true sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ and the church inspired by the Holy Ghost composed the divine office to be recited by the priests at the canon canonical hours. Now a little bit on the composition of the office. The office's purpose is is to sanctify all the hours of the day so as to remain under the activity and influence of the Holy Ghost and to fulfill the command of God which is to pray without ceasing and the priest is able to do this by his prayers at intervals throughout the day now the first office is that of matins which is the night office which on a feast consists of three nocturnes. Now in a monastery, matins would be said, followed by lords. At daybreak, at morning, the, the morning prayer of prime would be offered. And then throughout the day, to sanctify this period, there would be the office of terse at the third hour, which is at nine o'clock, the office at the sixth hour, which is at 12 noon of sext, and the office of known at 3 p.m., the ninth hour. Then in the evening would be offered the office of, of, of Vespers, the evening prayer, and then the day would close with the, with the night prayer before going to bed, the office of Compline. Now, all of these offices provide for the priest a staff and a guide on his way to heaven. The office of matins is the longest of the offices, and it consists of the, the Psalms composed by David under the influence of the Holy Ghost and recited by our Lord while he was here on this earth, but also has sacred scriptural readings which are for particular uh, chosen for particular times of the liturgical year and also for various readings on the gospel and for the saints of the day 
All of these nourish the priest and keep him in the contact and influence of the Holy Ghost. Now, finally, an exhortation for the faithful. It's always been the mind of the church that the faithful participate in the liturgy. And the, the faithful can participate in the divine office by reciting it in private or, as is more commonly done, by coming to various offices of the church. And particularly exhorted is the office of Vespers, which is the evening office and is a good way of sanctifying the Sunday. Encouraged also is the custom of attending the night prayer, that of, Com of Compline. May God bless you.